So my name is Linda J. Monson, and I was born in the Bronx. I've had a rather long life. <laughs> um, I just celebrated my 84th birthday. I grew up in a family of musicians, classical and other types. I had an aptitude for music. I loved music. And my own children are both musicians. And I would say I taught in the classroom for 44 years, public school, private school, university. It's a lifelong commitment. I met Linda in 2004, and it wasn't until studying with Linda and understanding how the voice works and how the brain develops to become musical that I said, I want to teach. Linda knows so much about music, and that inspired me. And in turn, it makes me want to inspire my students. I can't imagine my life without music. One particular student I worked with was Jeffrey Mandelwell, and he and I have worked from his sophomore year all the way through to now. I am a countertenor, an opera singer, classical singer. I focus on music from the Baroque period mostly. A lot of what Linda's work is, is about making human beings. Her approach to music teaching and vocal training is very organic. She goes slowly and listens and follows where your voice wants to go. First, let me hear you say, Ma. I've become closely involved with his family. I'm his son's godmother. Both he and I have used the teaching in many ways in our personal relationship, too. Over the 34 years we've been working together, we've never run out of things to do. I am not hearing much of a change in dynamics, though. So one has a chance to watch students develop over many years, watching that voice stretch and grow, and that I find very exciting. I've had thyroid cancer since 1993 and was living with that during the pandemic. My son was on tour with the touring company of The Lion King as a featured drummer. He had decided to surprise me and come, take a few days off and come and visit. And when he got here, he felt that Things were not quite right with me. Well, he called an ambulance, and they found that my sodium was abnormally low. She had a major physical collapse, and I thought I'd lost her. I thought that was it. I thought, I mean, I couldn't possibly imagine her coming back from that state. It was difficult because She's the one who has to deal with it, but you know, just how, can, how to be there for your friend, for your mentor, for your teacher. So after about, uh, I think a little over a week, I chose to go to the hospice. I feel lucky to have gotten a bed here in, in the Brooklyn Calvary. People have been so good to me here, so giving and caring in a, in a kind, gracious way. Uh, here at Calvary, it's been very peaceful. I feel a very peaceful energy when I come in here. I got to see Linda in her room and to chat with her. Voice teacher. That's what he said. Uh, I that you are a voice teacher. I'm happy that she is very comfortable here. She does talk to me about her experience here. And I know that she does feel supported and she does feel happy that she's in Brooklyn and that she's close to friends and family. It was uh, such a relief after the horror that she had been through. And then the idea that she was ready to start working again. 
the music therapist let us use his keyboard and we started getting back to work. The staff has been very welcoming and uh, I think somewhat uh, enchanted by the sounds that we're making in the space. Everybody did say that Calvary was the best and I'm very happy here. I'm thankful to be here right now. It was a good choice to come to Calvary. I would like to say, Calvary, thank you. Linda's illness was a long, long battle as it or on. She was such a such a little trooper. So sometimes I think the little engine that could. I just wanted her in the best possible place. And I know Linda and her sister were very pleased with Calvary. Their mother was at Calvary. And in fact, Linda, she would donate something to Calvary every year because she was so grateful to how they treated her mother. And the amount of love that she had from the time we brought her into Brooklyn Hospital, it really touched me and it really touched her. And to see somebody you, you, you love so much that, that you came from, from them, that's your mother, to see them and the, the, you know you, you know the end is, is upon her, um, that definitely wasn't easy. But that said, I would not rather be anywhere else in the world. And I'm so grateful I got to say softly into her ears how incredible she was and created so much love. and received so much love and I actually I knew the time was was upon us so I got Jeff on the phone. It was very moving as I held the phone up fighting away my tears because I know how much Jeff loves my mother and what a special relationship they have. And so then you know she did take her last breaths. I would certainly recommend Calvary. There was a lot of people there who really seemed to care genuinely and they, they really took care of Linda, and I'm so grateful, I'm beyond grateful to Calvary.